Hey everybody, it's Boardman21, and today's build, we're going to do an updated Lightning Shaman build. Now before, we had it basically as an autocast build where you ran around and Lightning was being proc from Maelstrom, Tornadoes, uh, Storm Totem, and you were having it proc on every spellcast, or you had about a 40% chance on spellcast for it to proc Lightning, and it was a really fun build, but we wanted to see if we could take it to the next level, so we changed around a few skills. So Tempest Strike will now have a chance to proc Lightning, it won't have a 0% proc chance, although that's only if you're actually hitting enemies. When you're not hitting enemies, you still have the 0% proc chance and you'll get mana back that is how we'll be mana regening but if you get a hit you have a chance to double cast some lightning in there which is just more lightning storm totem will now have a chance to be a thunder totem and the thunder totem just does absolutely great damage and will just annihilate everything and the way we change tornado is tornado will no longer be auto cast instead you'll have to manually do it and what this allows for is when we get to boss fights or a lot of enemies we can spam the crap out of it especially since we really stacked a lot of mana just for that and when you get to a point where you have 30 tornadoes on the screen along with your six stacks of maelstrom and, a, and you have your storm totem there's lightning and storms everywhere and it looks fantastic it can get a little bit laggy once you break about 20 tornadoes so be a little careful with it but for the most part it's a pretty lag free and we're not running thorn totem so we're not proccing all of that uh if they ever do fix the thorn totem procs with like the poison cloud or the freeze clouds i would definitely recommend throwing that in there maybe instead of ice thorns or maybe even instead of of like the uh, you don't really want to get rid of Storm Totem or, or the Tornadoes, but if you get rid of Ice Thorn because it's not really lightning based for this, and you throw in the Thorn Totems, you could definitely get the clouds going, and as long as that doesn't lag in the future, it would be a very, very potent build. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills. For skills, we're going to be running Ice Thorns, Maelstrom, Tornado, Summon Storm Totem and Tempest Strike. For Ice Thorns, we have this set up so in our passives, every time we cast a spell, there's a chance for us to strike a nearby enemy with lightning. And Ice Thorns is one of those spells that can go off every second, and with its auto recast, there's a chance for it to basically, on average, go off every 0.6 seconds. That just means a lot of extra lightning strikes for something that's free, and it can give you some defense and it's free, so why not? So we have one point in Emblem of Might, one point in Animophily, one point in Thorn Shield, four points in Bulb Shield, one point in Second Nature, six points in Floric Tides, three points in Bark Shield, and three points in Eternal Protection. For Maelstrom, we use this for a lot of defense, and it's got lightning, and it's got healing. So it's just a triple bonus, and we definitely like it. The first thing is two points in Arctic Chill, and three points with Healing Wind, so that we get six health healed per second per stack, and healing effectiveness does affect that. So with the way we have it set up here, we're getting just over 100 life per second, which is a really nice thing to have. We also have two points in Arctic Blast, one point in Sudden Gale, so we can insta-cast it, so it's always going off. We'll put it on auto-cast. Two points in Column for a little bit of mana efficiency. The three points in Sleet Footed will give us quite a bit of dodge. 45 times our six or seven average stacks means we'll be sitting at your 250 to 300 dodge at all times. That'll be increased a little bit with our gear with the set dodge prefix. We have three points. Three points in Whirlpool for increased duration, one point in Power of the Storm, and three points in Energize to let it target up to four targets at once with Lightning. This is a lot of Lightning. For Tornado, we also have this set up for Lightning, and we also have it set up to one double cast and two not on insta cast so that we can have as many as possible with the new cooldown. We have one point in Aspect of the Storm and four points in Gust of Renewal so that we get some mana regen and the Tornado itself has some mana efficiency. With one point in Charged Storm, it now casts Lightning. Four points in Frequent Lightning will increase how often that it does it. It's normally every two seconds, but with 140% cooldown, it should be about every 0.6 to 0.8 seconds. And one point in Overcast Skies to increase that range. Four points in Lasting Storm to double the duration, four points in Hurricane to make it to where you cast two at once instead of one, and just one point in Debris for that little bit of base damage. For Storm Totem, we wanted to stay out of the cold and make this completely lightning and do as much damage as possible. We have four points in Lightning Radar for more cast speed so that it does more lightning strikes, three points in Direct Current for that huge base crit chance, Three points in Power Shunt for that 90% critical multiplier, so when it does crit, it crits hard. Two points in Static Field, 
3 points in exploit weakness so that it will do more hit damage against a shocked enemy. 4 points in pass press your advantage so that you have more crit chance against a shocked enemy. So once an enemy is shocked you'll do more damage to them and you're more likely to crit them. 1 point in storm rider to finish it off for some move speed. And then for Tempest Strike, we have one point in Reinforced Stone, one point in Thirsty Blades, one point in Charged Stone, and one point in Dead Wind. This makes it to where it no longer procs the Northern Winds. Five points in Unspent Power, so that every time you use it, you'll get 20 mana back as long as nothing's procced. Two points in Static, two points in With the Wind, one point in Temptitious, and one point in Mute Earth makes it no longer proc Earth Spike. So the only thing that it can proc and only when it hits an enemy is the Lightning, and it doesn't have a very high chance. So you're almost always getting mana back, but when it does proc that Lightning, we have two points in Storm Strike and three points in Lightning can strike twice, so that there's a 100% chance to do a double strike. It's just more Lightning. For passives, we have 25 points in the Primalist base class, with 6 points in Gift of the Wilderness, 1 point in Natural Attunement, 1 point in Primal Strength, 5 points in Tempest Born, 1 point in Primal Medicine, 1 point in Ancient Call, 5 points in Wisdom of the Wild, and 5 points in Elder Branch. We have 10 points in the Druid, with 8 of them in Soul's Attendment, and 2 in Edera's Boon, and 78 points in Shaman with 8 points in Shamanic Infusion, 8 points in Ancient Stones, 8 points in Silent Protector, 8 points in Tempest Form, 10 points in Stormbringer, 5 points in Avatar of Thunder, 2 points in Windbringer, 5 points in Shattered Heavens, 5 points in Protective Circle, and 3 points in Lagoon's Answer so that every time that we cast a spell there's a 24% chance for us to have a lightning strike happen. I would recommend putting a full 5 points in here and we will probably take a couple points out of Conflicts which gives you more damage with it into that to make sure that we have a 40% chance. For items, for items you want spell damage, lightning damage, and increased mana everywhere that you can put it. Now two important things to make the totem do good damage is you want totem increased cast speed if you can get it and totem adaptive spell damage. We put both of those on the helm and on the chest. We are also running Orient's Eye just so that we can get that additional boost to mana so that you can really stock up in between waves by just using Tempest Strike and have a big amount of it. That way when it comes to a boss you can just spam the crap out of Tornadoes. For the other jewelry slots we are doing Set Elemental and Set Dodge to really take advantage of the fact that we get double elemental protections while we have an active totem so that our elemental protections we really just don't worry about we don't have to worry about void it's the necrotic poison and physical that's going to hurt really bad we have 100 percent glancing blow we have it on the belt the boots we have it on the gloves we had it on the helm and then the other ring of course necrotic and poison protection with that increased set dodge and set elemental for idols two types of idols we have increased healing effectiveness which the suffix is lightning damage the other thing that you want, and you could run four of them if you find them, is increased cast speed for totems. Four of those makes your storm totem absolutely just go nuts with lightning. However, we did two so that we could get in some healing effectiveness. This will boost the healing you get from Maelstrom and really increases your survivability. Alright, for the character sheet, you can see here without an idol, we have plenty of elemental protection, but everything else is pretty low. You don't need any void. We do have 100% glancing blow. Our dodge looks low, but again, once we actually get Maelstrom growing and we have a Storm Totem here, you'll see that we actually are doing quite well. Our elemental protections you don't even have to worry about. It's the other three you want to dodge, and we can get you know right there at about 50% 50, 50 dodge average, which makes it really nice. If you want, I would throw in more dodge, maybe instead of health, which will increase your survivability a little bit on the gear. For the play style of this, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to put Ice Thorns on autocast, Maelstrom on autocast, my Storm Totem on autocast, and then we're just going to sit here and we're going to use Tempest Strike to get all of our mana back, which it will go up. And then whenever it's full, you just wait till you get to a boss fight or start. You can just cast one tornado at a time every now and then and keep your mana completely full. As you can see, our mana can stay pretty full here, and as it stays full, you can still have quite a few tornadoes going, and then when you get to a boss fight, you just absolutely unleash all the tornadoes. You have your storm totem, you have everything. With this many tornadoes, they're all doing lightning. It just gets absolutely ridiculous, as you'll see in some of the gameplay. And now, for the gameplay.